Imagine being thrown into deep water. You try to escape by climbing up the sides, but the walls of the tank are too slippery and steep. You swim frantically, struggling to keep your head above water, to keep from drowning. But it's exhausting and you're terrified. At some point you give up and just float, not knowing if you'll ever escape. This is the notorious force swim test, developed in the late 1970s and first called a despair test. Experimenters have terrorized hundreds of thousands of mice and rats with this cruel torment. The small animals try to climb up the sides of the beaker. Then they dive to the bottom looking for an escape. They struggle desperately to keep their heads above water. Their extreme fear causes them to defecate. But what does the test even tell us? If you stop swimming and begin floating, is this a sign of despair? That you've given up on life? Surely being faced with imminent drowning is very different from experiencing depression. Perhaps it means that you're trying to conserve energy, trying to survive. Those using the test can't even agree on what the test tells them about the animals they traumatize. So experimenters draw false conclusions about what may help humans suffering from depression. It's no wonder they haven't produced any effective new treatments for this mental health condition. By subjecting animals to the horror of near drowning, the forced swim test terrifies animals and it deprives humans of real help for depression. But companies such as Pfizer, Eli Lilly, Bristol-Myers Squibb, and Abbott Laboratories still use it. 